Hello developers. If you've been following this playlist, you know we're building more than just a layout. We're creating a product experience where the scroll feels alive, the layout responds, and every interaction is part of a story. In this video, we'll structure the entire HTML layout, and everything we build here will directly connect to the CSS and the animations we'll create. Let's break it down. We start with the head section, keeping it minimal but essential. It includes meta tags for mobile responsiveness, a link to the inter font from Google Fonts, and our external style sheet. The real work happens inside the body tag. Now, our body structure is intentionally built to support scroll triggered transitions. Let's explore how and why. At the top, we place a wrapper div with the ID Smooth Wrapper. This outermost container prepares our page for GSAP scroll smoothing or advanced effects like pin transitions across sections. Think of it as the scroll canvas will animate inside. Next comes the header. It includes a logo, a horizontal navigation menu for desktop, and a hamburger menu for mobile. Below that, we've added a hidden mobile navigation container, which we'll toggle later with JavaScript. What's important here is that this header is fixed and styled to animate in on load, and it gives us a reliable place to anchor scroll-based transitions. Then we move to the main content, wrapped with an ID named Smooth Content. This gives GSAP a separate context for scroll animations. Inside the main, the first key section is the hero. But here's the twist. We separate the visual bottle from the hero section. We create a dedicated container called Hero Bottle Wrapper, positioned above everything. Inside it is the bottle image. Why do we separate it? because we want to pin this element across multiple sections. It's not part of just the hero, it's part of the entire scroll experience. By isolating it, we can animate it independently from the layout below. Now the hero section itself holds the core title, the main heading made of two stacked lines and a decorative stamp. These elements are animated on page load. The stamp fades in and vibrates slightly. The text reveals from behind, and transitions from stroke to solid color. This is our visual hook. It makes the product feel premium, bold, and memorable. Next, we move to the intro section, structured using a grid. On the left, we place a small title, a large heading, a paragraph, and a boxed call to action. This is the product's voice. It introduces the heritage and invites users to explore more. On the right, we build an ingredient log a vertical stack showing quantities and short descriptions. Each item is split between a bold number and a short label. Visually, this will feel like a handcrafted list. Functionally, this is the moment the bottle begins to shift in position, slightly rotating and scaling, adding depth as the user scrolls. Then comes the timeline section. This is where we narrate history. Each timeline entry includes two parts, a left column for the date and image, and a right column for the story. We alternate the layout for visual rhythm. First entry aligns one way, second entry flips. This makes the scroll experience more dynamic and gives us multiple animation opportunities. We'll make the bottle shift left or right based on which side is active. The timeline structure also helps visually divide the scroll into scenes. This will allow us to apply section-based scroll trigger animations, rotating the bottle, translating it across the screen, and creating a seamless scroll narrative. Finally, we add a fixed aside element, which holds a vertical social media sidebar. This stays fixed to the left on desktop and converts to horizontal on mobile. We'll animate it on page load and even animate the height of its border using GSAP. -E. And of course, the layout ends with a footer, a flexible section with navigation links, branding, and contact details. This wraps up the structure while keeping the visual weight balanced at the bottom. So why did we build it this way? Because scroll-based animation isn't just about moving elements. It's about structuring the HTML to give us full control, where each block is modular, each visual is isolated, and every element is ready for interaction. In the next video, we'll bring this structure to life with CSS. We'll style the layout using custom fonts, spacing, grid systems, and responsive rules. And we'll lay the foundation for precise, scroll-connected animations. If you're learning something new and you're excited to animate with logic, press the like button and subscribe to the channel. 
It really motivates me to keep building advanced tutorials like this. See you in the next video.